Okay, so I'm Simon, and today I'm presenting on an empirical analysis of Java performance quality. So for the objectives of this project, it was to see if we can enhance the performance of Java applications and Java programs without modifying the Java code directly. This is especially useful if uh, you don't have access to the Java code or um, you're not proficient in Java programming. So therefore, by using this method, you won't have to like learn Java if you don't know how to um, program in Java. Another reason is, um, another, another objective is to perform test runs with the spec JVM benchmarks and uh, tune the parameters of memory heap size and garbage collection in order to enhance the performance quality of the computer and figure out uh, how to best optimize the performance. So why is this important? This is important because many companies, uh, many large computer companies such as Google have several large data centers with uh, lots of computer networks that are very big and improving the performance of applications by even one or two percent is very huge. Even on a smaller scale, um, applications that use high performance are also benefit from this uh, small performance increase. So now I'll talk about Spec JVM and its benchmarks, which I used uh, in my project. I used Spec JVM. I downloaded its Spec JVM from the website, and it's a benchmark suit that measures a computer's system performance through its JRE. The Spec JVM has around 12 different benchmarks, each for different purposes. But for the purposes of this project, I'll be focusing on three main Spec JVM benchmarks: the Serial benchmark the Derby benchmark, and the Sunflow benchmark. The serial benchmark focuses on serialization and deserialization, which for a brief definition of serialization, it's the process of turning objects into bytes of stream. Uh, so it can be stored in RAM, and deserialization would be the reverse process, so turning it back into objects. For the Derby benchmark, it focuses on big decimal computations, so it figures out how to implement uh, arbitrarily sized numbers into your Java applications, and it also focuses a lot on database logic processes as well. Lastly, for the Sunflow benchmark, it focuses on graphic visualization through uh, rendering, and this is especially useful for high GUI uh, Java applications and things that require a lot of images. Each benchmark in Spec JVM, including the ones not mentioned here, are have a warm-up phase and an iteration phase. The warm-up phase is 120 seconds long, while the inter iteration phase is twice as long, which is 240 seconds. And the warm-up phase purpose, just like any other activity, is to get the benchmark ready so that it can produce an accurate um, performance result. And the iteration phase is 240 seconds long, which makes the whole benchmark phase around six minutes long, and it will provide you an output in ops per minute or operations per minute. So because whenever you run this, you're testing the system's performance, and it's important to use the same laptop throughout the whole project and to also uh, know its configurations. So for the, this, for the laptop configurations I used, I used a Lenovo Flex 3 notebook, and it has an Intel Core 7 processor. And it has eight gigabytes of RAM, and it's a dual core, and since each core has two logical processors and two physical processors, typically, there are a total of four logical processors which will be um, important in the data collection steps. So for the parameters used for the spec JVM runs, I focused on one parameter at a time, and the two parameters I focused on were adjusting the memory heap size uh, and garbage collection. For adjusting the memory heap size parameter, I used three different parameters in addition, three different adjustments of the parameter in addition to my default, and here the three different ones are negative x, mx, 1g, 2g, and 3g, and the negative x signifies that you're changing the memory heap size in Java. The MX suggests that you're changing the maximum heap memory size. And the 1G is just one gigabyte, two gigabytes, or three gigabytes. And 
thus that's uh, these different adjustments are changing the maximum heat memory size of your um, spec JVM benchmark runs. For tuning the garbage collection, I focused on three uh, main garbage collection methods, parallel, concurrent mark sweep, and garbage first garbage collection. And for parallel, it uses multiple threads in order to correctly locate the garbage or unused dead objects and recycle them so you have uh, freed up more space for other tasks in Java. The concurrent mark sweep garbage collection is similar to the parallel in that it, um, except it uses more CPU performance to ensure a higher performance throughput. And the garbage first garbage collection focuses on high, uh, la very large heat memory size areas and what it does is it breaks them down into smaller regions. And for each of these smaller, while well, it's looking at these smaller regions, it looks at the region with the most garbage or unused objects, and it focuses on fixing that one first. So now for the data collection for serial performance versus heat memory size, I um, I compare the three, the three adjustments of the parameter, 1G, 2G, and 3G with the performance along with three trials. As you can see here, there's a lot of variability between the, um, throughout the data table with, uh, for negative XMX 1G, the 79.45 is lowest with 98.74 being the highest, which is like a 25% increase roughly. And as you can see by the averages, there's not much of a clear trend and most of the performance values in operations per minute is roughly the same as it goes from 89.45 to 88.00 and uh, down to 85 and then finally back up to 90, roughly 93. So therefore, it's very hard to come up with a clear uh, and concise conclusion for the serial performance versus heat memory size. So here are the graphs for the serial runs versus uh, the Java heat memory size. And in order, in order to get these graphs, I first ran the spec JVM on CMD as usual. And I ran perform a software called Performance Monitor as well, or Perfmon for short. And I logged the Perfmon data into an Excel file. And I used a data analysis language called R to uh, put these into graphs and look at it uh, visually. And as you can see here, there's just like the data table, there's not a clear conclusion you can draw as most of the data points are scattered at around the 350 to 400 line. And also in these graphs, the elapsed time um, is slightly longer than 240 seconds because I started the graphing time a little bit before and a little bit after the runs in order to capture the full data set. Also, another thing to notice is that I used the Java processor time percentage for the y-axis, so you can see how each of the processors is, um, how hard they are working in the computer system. And another thing to note is that for an uh, axis involving percentage, usually you would expect the axis to go to like 100% as a maximum, but since this is the Java processors and there's four logical processors mentioned on the computer, um, on the computer as mentioned in a previous slide, that would be 400%. So if, if there was a data point at the top of the line at 400%, then that would mean all four logical processors are working uh, full time. So next, after the serial benchmark, I tested for the Derby performance versus the heat memory size. And once again, it's uh, harder, to, it's a little hard to draw a conclusion. However, it does seem like there is, it might seem like there is a little bit of a decline from 262 to 248 to the 230 region. And I also use the same parameters of 1G, 2G, and 3G. And um, however, there's still a lot of variability, especially in the last adjustment of the parameter, negative XMX 3G, where the minimum is 210 and the maximum is 260. Um, So after graphing these, uh, 
after graphing the derby runs the same way I graph the serial runs, which uses perfmon, Excel, and RStudio, I also arrived at a similar conclusion that most of them here, they cluster around the 350 and <coughs> the 350 line for Java processor time percentage. And again, it's hard to draw a clear conclusion based on these trials. So after the memory heap size parameter, I focused on the garbage collection types with the serial benchmark first. And from these trials, you can see that uh, they are a little bit more concise and tight. In the data, with there's not much variability between the um, trials, which means that it's, which implies that the data collection period was slightly more accurate. And you can see from the averages that the parallel seems to be performing slightly better overall based on the trials as well as the averages than the other ones, suggesting that the, uh, suggesting the possible idea that the serial benchmark uh, performs better with the parallel garbage collection. Next, for the Derby benchmark, I also took three trials, and you can see here that the garbage first garbage, garbage, first garbage collection type uh, has a significantly higher performance rate than the others, than the other three concurrent mark sweep, parallel, and the default, which I believe is also uh, parallel. And you can see here that it's different than the other one, where the parallel was the highest uh, yielded the highest performance, but here garbage first yielded the highest performance, and this is possible because, the, as I mentioned earlier, the different garbage collection methods uses uh, different uh, method, like they're slightly different in their methodology. Like the garbage first focuses on breaking down the heat memory size into smaller areas, and parallel uses multiple threads. So it's possible that. Um, with different, and the different benchmarks are different as well, with Derby focusing on database logic and uh, Sunflow focusing on graphics visualizations. So it's definitely possible that a different garbage collection type may be best suited for a certain benchmark. Next, for the Sunflow benchmark, I the averages are uh, 40, the highest average is 49.40 for the garbage first, which is similar to the Derby benchmark and uh, different from the serial, which, as I mentioned earlier, can uh, still make logical sense. And uh, another thing to note for um, these for these uh, performance operations per minute is that the Sunflow benchmark is around, averages around between 40 and 50. The, uh, the Derby benchmark averages between uh, around 300 and the serial is around 90 to 100. And similar to how the different garbage collection types work for different, um, different benchmarks, there's also a difference in performance as some benchmarks may be more intensive in performance than others, as um, seen in the next slide with the Derby benchmark, the 300 uh, operations per minute suggests that it is more intensive in performance than both the serial and the Sunflow, which are significantly less. So for the conclusions for modifying the memory heap size parameter, there seems to be like little to no effect on the Java performance based on these data values from the data table. And um, for the garbage collection options, uh, tuning the garbage collection parameters, it appears that the different benchmarks perform uh, better with different garbage collection systems. So there's a certain garbage collection type that best suits a uh, SpecJVM uh, spec benchmark system. So as you can see, especially in the serial data with the memory heap size, which was my first data table in this presentation, there's a lot of sources of experimental error that cause a lot of variability in the data. And one of the sources of error is the computer background processes, uh, such as uh, security systems or 
battery systems. And this may cause fluctuations in the computer's performance as it has to direct more um, energy to solving, uh, to dealing with those problems. And in order to collect the data, a lot of applications had to be used. Um, CMD, uh, Excel to get the data, our studio to analyze the data, and, perf and performance monitor to also analyze the data. So a lot of these applications could have caused fluctuations in the data as well. And unfortunately, there's not really a clear or easy way to deal with this, as you have to collect the data in order to draw conclusions. So the variability is uh, inevitable. <coughs> So for the next steps, a possible next step is to test lower heat memory sizes uh, such as 512 megabytes. And although this may seem like a very small um, memory size to deal with, a lot of, if you're looking at a large data center, they may be running a lot of smaller, very small applications, but in numerous, in high numbers. So it can still be important to test this. And the reason why one might want to test this is because for when you're adjusting the maximum heat memory size to one gigabyte or two gigabytes or three gigabytes for these benchmarks, the high memory size might um, not be necessary, so it might not affect the performance value as say it only needed to use like 500 uh, megabytes of memory. So, but if you adjust it to a lower number like 512 or uh, 200 something, then it, you, will, you might be able to see uh, significant trends in the performance values as well as the, um, because the me heat memory size will start to become a limiting factor in your test. Another next step is to perform further analysis on both the garbage collection data as well as the heat memory size data in order to better observe their differences in performance. Some suggestions are, some possible ways to do this are like chi-square tests so you can see if the differences are significant or not, as well as uh, regressions to see how accurate the data is as well. Questions? Um, robotics was a big factor as um, when I did the first tech challenge robotics they focused a lot on uh, Java programming for the robots so that so like if I could figure out a way to improve like Java performance that would also help a lot with things like robotics as well I did not attend that sorry Um, I chose those because a lot of uh, apps, Java apps that I know are like roughly one gigabyte or two gigabytes or three gigabytes. And I did think about going in between like one point, like 1.5 or something or higher as well, or even lower as mentioned in the uh, next steps slide. But um, I wanted to focus on other parts of the project as well. All right, great. Let's hear it for uh, Simon. Uh, thanks.